Perceive, process, perform. Do you need inspiration for your practice? Or do you simply need to practice inspiration? With this series, we aim to do both. Give us 15 minutes and we'll give you practice inspiration. Dr. Newton Fall maintains a private practice emphasizing aesthetic and cosmetic dentistry in Brazil. He is director of the Fall Center, where he conducts hands-on courses and other courses on direct and indirect adhesive restorations. Hello, everyone. My name is Newton Fall, and I'm here to share with you a panoramic view of the possibilities that we have with composite resins to restore a smile. And I'll share with you some cases that will exemplify these possibilities. Composites are part of today's armamentarium, regardless of whether you are a prosthodontist or if you are in pure operative dentistry. By that I mean it can be used in conjunction with indirect restorations because it is minimally invasive and you can preserve tooth structure, in, such as in the case that you see on the screen, where I can augment part of tooth number nine with composite, and then tooth number eight, which required perio and a crown, was restored with a ceramic restoration. So composites can be used in conjunction with ceramics to achieve the goal. The question here is why do I need to use composites, or why should I use to use composites in the anterior segment? Well, first and foremost, it is minimally invasive. Secondly, it gives us the mastery of the technique. You are the artist. You are the perpetrator of your work. It can be done fairly quickly. It brings a lot of value, and it's very cost effective to the patient. Sometimes patients cannot afford costly uh, large treatment plans, and composites will serve well. The aesthetics is excellent because it blends in with the natural dentition and the optical properties are fantastic. The longevity is also very good in the realm of 10 to 15 years. And what really serves me a lot is the personal satisfaction that it provides the operator, in this case, myself. I have a lot of pride, a lot of satisfaction when I work with composites and patients appreciate that as well. Now, the thing that really drives everybody nuts is the fact that there are a preposterous amount of composites on the market. Last I checked, there were over 40 different types of composite systems available, which makes it very difficult for the clinician to select the one he or she wants to use. So the question here is, which one should I use and based on what? First of all, there is no perfect composite system. There is no perfect brand. You need to resort to physical properties such as sculptability, fracture toughness, wear resistance, polishability, and color stability, which is present in all of the state-of-the-art systems, and correlate that with the type of particles, microfills, hybrids, nanofills, and make sure that you use them correctly. The second thing you need to know is to look at the optical properties. What a dentin looks like, what does the enamel look like? And then you have to correlate hue, chroma, value, opacity, translucency, fluorescence, opalescence with the actual composite systems in order to select the layering technique that you will implement. Now, there are several different types of layering techniques, and in the time frame that we have, I'm going to share with you just a few possibilities. Back in 1995, I published an article entitled Protocol for Predictable Restoration of Anterior Teeth with Composite Resins, and that set the foundation for what we call today the polychromatic technique. And let me share with you what it is. You can use different types of composites according to the defects that you are restoring. If you have a minor chip on the incisal edge, it's one type of enamel. 
If you have a bigger, say, fracture like a class 4, you may choose to use a dentin and two or three types of enamels. The bigger the restoration, the more complex the defect, the more shades you might need to use to get it to match and blend in with the natural dentition. Well, let's start simple. Sometimes you can use one single shade of composite, such as in this situation of microabrasion, and just adding to the incisal edge and closing the embrasures, one single shade of enamel. Or you have abrasion and you have class threes. If you have a composite of proper optical and physical properties, all you actually need, such as in this case, is one single shade of composite. It'll blend in, it'll be strong enough, and it'll give you aesthetics and longevity. Sometimes you're going to need to use two shades, what I call the dual layering or the bilaminar technique, one dentin and one shade of enamel. And let me share with you how you do this. You do your lingual shelf with an enamel shade, and then you do your dentin application to block the fracture line, provide opacity, and then you finalize with a final layer of enamel. Two shades, and that restoration blends in. The other possibility, such as in cases where you have more polychromicity in the natural dentition, will call for the use of multiple layers, sometimes five, six, or seven, but that varies from case to case. This particular case, I used five shades because it called for, for the use of sh five shades. Now let's move a little forward and talk about the benefits of composites whenever you are restoring the fractured dentition. This patient had a trauma and she needed to have her teeth restored immediately. In this case, I even did it transurgically so that I could restore the periodontium to a sound state and then uh, the aesthetics was excellent. So I preserved the remaining tooth structure and I provided her with the utmost quality of restoration from an aesthetic and functional standpoint. Now, the other application of composite that I really enjoy is closing diastomas. Now, midline diastomas, all you really need is one or two shades of composites. Now, it's mandatory that we understand the concepts of form, and there are some anatomical guidelines that we need to go by in order to get our restorations in the proper dimensions, regardless of how many shades we're going to use. And that is true whenever you're working with multiple diastomas. You're closing multiple diastomas and you're working with orthodontics. You've got a treatment plan accordingly. You've got to look at the distribution of these teeth and the arch. And then you have to look at the anatomical landmarks, such as your point angles, line angles, incisal embrasures, facial embrasures, to change the, the ratio of these teeth, at least optically, giving it the appearance of being a little narrower than they actually will be. So composites can be used effectively to close multiple diastomas very conservatively and will give results, will elicit results that are excellent, such as the one you are seeing on the screen. Now, there are other types of restorations that really, really um, captivate me, and that is the direct indirect composite restorations. Back in 96, I published an article entitled The Direct Indirect Composite Resin Veneers, a case report. And then just recently, October of 95, I published an another article entitled Direct Indirect Class 5 Restorations, a Novel Approach for Treating Non-Carious Cervical Lesions. Now let me share with you what these are and why it is that I like them so much. These restorations are called direct indirect because they are done on the tooth, in the mouth, polymerized, they are removed, and then they're finished, heat tempered, and then bonded back on the same appointment. So what are the benefits of these techniques? Number one, marginal adaptation. Two, marginal polish. You're polishing and finishing outside the mouth. Therefore, you have a better periodontal health, the physical properties because of heat tempering and supplemental light curing will be enhanced. You have the ability to do shade try-in. You have chances for corrections and you can do them in one appointment. And also there is the cost aspect because they are less expensive or they should be than a ceramic veneer. 
But let me share with you the cases. How do you do them? Preparation for a single veneer on a central incisor, just like you would if you were doing this via a direct approach. It's just like a regular veneer preparation. And then what you do is you polish your substrate and you lubricate it with some Vaseline and then you do the layering on the tooth. Then you remove that veneer and you outline the margins. You finish it outside the mouth and then you can try it in and do your anatomical adjustments in the mouth. And then after you do your heat tempering, you will do the surface treatment. You sandblast that restoration, you bond it and then you will do the finishing after having bonded the restoration. You do your finishing of your uh, lobes and grooves and secondary anatomy, and then you polish it and you look at a restoration that provides superior aesthetics, superior marginal adaptation, and therefore a superior um, periodontal health. And this can be applied to situations such as what we call contact lens type veneers. They're so thin, like peg laterals. You do them without preparation. You just build them on, remove them, finish them. They're so thin. They're really like contact lens. And you can even build in a lot of shades. You can put in all sorts of shades that you like. And you finish them, and you bond them. So how conservative is that? It's actually more conservative, conservative than any other type of restoration and with all the benefits of the direct indirect procedure. And again, the anatomy is superior because you can put it in uh, in, a, in a way that it's better than when you do it directly. And the periodontal health is excellent because your margins are finished and polished to the utmost. Now finally, we have here a class five restoration that you're familiar with and you can do via a direct procedure for non-carious cervical lesions. But let me share with you what the class five is. What's the direct indirect class five? It's like a veneer, you do it on the tooth and then you remove it, finish it, and then you bond it back with all the benefits of the direct indirect technique. Marginal adaptation, marginal polish, and periodontal health, plus better access to difficult to reach areas like such as an upper second molar. Finally, let me share with you the gingivalase, cases where you have situations like this. A patient wants to have veneers. This is an after orthodontic, post ortho case, but she wanted no grafting. She, she says, I want to do veneers. I want to use you do no, not to prep my teeth, but I do not want to have any grafting. I have a low lip line and I don't want to do any grafting. But I told her, listen, you need to do something for this to stop the, the gingival recession. She goes, what can you do for me? So, well, I can do this. I can do veneers, and this is the outline for closing your uh, diastemas and the black spaces, and then they're gonna look like this. But again, look at your gingival recession. It's not look, gonna look good. Look at all the gingival heights. And she goes, what can you do for me? Well, I say, it's a good thing you have a low lip line, but let's improve on your periodontal health. What I will do for you is I will do gingivalase, like with pink composite, and then I'll do the veneers all the same. So what did I do here, and this is a very novel approach, is I built each tooth individually through the direct indirect technique, like you see on number eight, and that is at the gingival level because there, is, there was no gingival recession. Now the other teeth that had gingival recession required me to do a couple of things. I did the veneer up to the CEJ, and then the gingival part was done with a pink composite. I just added to it, and then I removed the veneer and the gingival uh, addition, and they were turned into one single veneer, tooth colored and tissue colored. And it looked like this. So I did all the other teeth, and you can see they are very thin. And the benefit here is twofold. One, you take care of the gingival recession, but then it blends in very beautifully because of this. You have a composite tooth margin, which is invisible. This is your, your uh, gingival sub-G margin. And then you have the pink composite margin, which blends in over the free gingival margin. And that internal part is a chamfered pink composite that embraces the free gingival margin. So it blends in beautifully uh, for cementation. So you do your cementation procedure, take care of your uh, veneers, you bond them in, 
just like you were bonding your regular veneers. And on the cervical, you take care of that um, uh, root surface adhesively. And this is what it looks like. It may not look excellent, but it looks so much better than it would if you hadn't done it. The question that may be posed here is, what do you do about cleaning of that area? Very simple. Just take the floss, and the patient will run the floss between the pink composite and the tissue very, very, very uh, effectively. So we were able to, without preparation, change her smile, change her gingival health in a way that would have been difficult otherwise with other procedures. So to finalize this, I want to address ceramic versus composite veneers. I think ceramic veneers have the ability to be minimally invasive depending on the preparation. They provide strength and biomimetics. Obviously, they last very long. Inherently, the aesthetics is superior. Collaboration with a ceramist helps us to divide the stress and the responsibility of the outcome. They give us the ability to do shade try-in and chance for minor color corrections through the use of our looting resin. So cases like this, where you do minimally invasive preparations, will elicit a very beautiful result. And there are cases where you want to use ceramic veneers, like feldspathic veneers in this case. And the outcome is fantastic. Obviously, there are indications. If the patient is a heavy smoker, uh, drinks a lot of red wine, or the dietary habits are not favorable. So sometimes you need, or as a smoker, sometimes you need to indicate porcelain veneers. But what if the patients can't really afford a full, complete um, restoration, like from molar to molar, such as in this last case that I'll present to you. This young lady had a situation that called for the use of veneers. Now, in her case, because of the rotation of her teeth, we said, well, you need to go from at least first bicuspid to bu first bicuspid to work around your buccal quarter. She goes, I can't afford all that. So all she could afford to get to that result was four ceramic veneers. But I told her, listen, this won't be ideal. I need to go at least canine and premolars. So I told her, listen, I can do this for a much less, much less than the ceramic veneer. I can do composite, direct, indirect veneers. And we did. We did four ceramic veneers from lateral to lateral. And then the canines and the first premolars were restored with direct, indirect composites. So these are possibilities that we have with composites. I think they are fantastic in terms of uh, helping us achieve great results very conservatively with minimally invasive procedures with long-lasting results and being very cost-effective to the patients. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I look forward to speaking with you more in the future. Thank you very much.